Hey, it's Dr. Fox. And so I was talking with a student of mine and we were talking about AI and how that's influencing different professions and different aspects of our world. And what came up is how would AI treat a personality disorder? We didn't just zoom in on BPD. We we're saying, okay, well, let's, let's look at it more generally. So is AI your next psychologist or therapist or mental health provider? Hmm. Well, let's take a look. Now, we're going to look at what ChatGPT says how to diagnose a personality disorder. We're going to dive into this, really look at it so we can get a sense of it. And then I'll tell you as a human being how I diagnose a personality disorder. We'll see if it's same, different. And please leave a comment on which one you think is effective and which you prefer. It's not going to hurt my feelings. It's okay. This is kind of an experiment, so stick with me. And uh, let's get into it. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and comment too, right? Okay. So I asked ChatGPT, I said, how to diagnose a personality disorder? And I'm not going to read everything that it came up with, but it said that the diagnosis of a personality disorder is typically made by a qualified mental health professional. And that's good. I've noticed that ChatGPT does recognize that other individuals are needed in order to make a medical diagnosis, a psychological diagnosis, as well as when you ask it about different disorders and things like that, it does have that caveat in there to seek a qualified medical mental health provider. So that's in here. And they even specify such as a psychiatrist or psychologist. That's me. All right. So the process involves a comprehensive assessment that includes several steps. Now, the step one is an initial evaluation. And this is pretty good. It's a mental health professional conducting an initial interview, gathering information about your symptoms, medical history, your personal background. And the interview involves questions about your thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and relationships. I think that's pretty good. Then it talks about the diagnostic criteria. And here it says that you'll be referred to the diagnostic criteria outlined in the DSM-5. That's the current edition right? Or another diagnostic manual. Now, it depends on where you are in the world. Not everybody uses the DSM-5, so that's good. There's the ICD-10, the ICD-11, you know, depending on when the video comes out or when you're watching it, what is available. Now, they also assess whether the individual meets criteria, specific criteria for personality disorder based on the reported symptoms and observed behaviors. Yeah, that's true. That is, that is true. That is true. Then it talks about a clinical interview. And this is using various clinical interview structured assessments designed to evaluate personality functioning and identify specific personality traits or patterns. And that's good because I was wondering, are you going to mention patterns? Because that's critical. If you've seen my other videos, you know I talk about beliefs, behaviors, and patterns, and that is critical. Now, also, ChatGPT says assessments may include questions about your beliefs, attitudes, interpersonal relationships, and coping mechanisms. Pretty good. That's pretty good. What about observation and history? Now, let's see. This is really tricky, particularly when I'm doing an initial assessment and diagnostic session with someone, getting the observation history can be really tricky. So let's see. ChatGPT says, the mental health professional may gather information from multiple sources. This can include family members, close friends, or other relevant individuals who can provide insights into the person's behavior and functioning. Now, this information helps to gain that comprehensive understanding of the individual's personality patterns. There's patterns again. That's what I'm looking for in my mind. Does ChatGPT know patterns? And I, I do think that it is important to get input from other family members, things like that. However, that can be really tricky. Now, if you're doing an intake into like an inpatient center, let's say McLean Hospital or somewhere like that, if they can get additional information from a family member, a loved one, things like that, I think that's wonderful. That certainly adds to the clinical picture. However, you're not always able to do that in the real world. It's nice to state that, but typically you're not able to do that. Now, next, it says differential diagnosis. Now, this is important, is that the mental health professional, that'd be me in this case, consider other possible explanations for the symptoms and rule out other mental health conditions that may present similar features. And this is good. This is really important because what we have to do is we have to diagnostically distinguish, we'll say BPD in this case, from other issues. Could be dual diagnosis, could be alcoholism, drug addiction, could also be, and we know, because if, if you read the purple book back there, you know that there's complex BPD. 
And we know that the majority of individuals that do qualify for borderline personality disorder have comorbid conditions, all the way up to 97% of individuals diagnosed with BPD. So we always want to look for other conditions. So that's really good that you're looking for those other rule outs, those other overlapping or comorbid conditions. So that's really good. Now, essentially, it is essential to differentiate personality disorders from other disorders, such as mood disorders, anxiety disorders. Now, they're not talking about substance abuse. Substance abuse, however, is very, very important. And also there's other factors as well, particularly for that clinical interview. Now, ChatGPT isn't doing the interview because how do you diagnose is what we ask ChatGPT, right? So we want to we want to give ChatGPT, you know, we want to give it a little latitude. All right, so let's go to the next one, duration and impact. Now, a personality disorder diagnosis typically requires that the patterns of behavior and experience have been present for an extended period, typically dating back to early adulthood, and cause significant distress or impairment in various areas of life. That's that socioeconomic dysfunction that we talk about. And what it's doing is it's actually paraphrasing from the DSM-5, which says that in order for somebody to qualify for a personality disorder, that that pattern has to be in place across contexts. And that's very true. That is something that I absolutely do. When I'm identifying personality disorders in my clients or individuals that I do consultation with, or even my assistant Jasmine, when she's doing that, we're always looking for those patterns. We're always looking for those other factors, that socioeconomic dysfunction, as well as how long have these behaviors, beliefs, and patterns been present, and what maladaptive issues are they falling into and causing? Now, the last one is clinical judgment. Finally, based on all the gathered information and clinical expertise, the mental health professional, be me, will make a diagnosis or provide a diagnostic impression specifying the type of personality disorder present, which could be BPD, could be avoidant, could be narcissistic personality disorder, whatever it may be. Now, ChatGPT has a little closing statement. And it says, it's worth noting that diagnosing personality disorders can be complex. It is complex. Yep. As individuals may exhibit a range of symptoms and traits that can overlap with other disorders. True. Therefore, it's crucial to consult with a qualified mental health professional who has expertise in diagnosing and treating personality disorders. They will use their expertise and the information gathered during the assessment process to make an accurate diagnosis. Okay. So where do I stand with this? So I would say that this is pretty good. I think that it's a pretty good, simplistic overview of it. I think that there are many facets that are not included in this. And we have to ask ourselves, so where we are right now with AI, is it comprehensive enough to provide therapy? I know that they're trying to do AI with some treatment models, things like that. It's not really successful. What they are doing, which they have found some moderate success, is that the artificial intelligence that it is able to reflect back the emotion that might be conveyed in the typed or spoken statement. And I think that that is an interesting place to start. When we talk about beliefs, behaviors, and patterns of personality, I think that we're pretty far away. And I don't know how far away, how quickly we get there, right? I don't know. Is it warp speed or is it turtle speed? I don't know. But that I think that we may get there someday, but I don't know that it would have the same reaction or the same efficacy as talking to another human being. Because I think that ChatGPT is leaving out some critical components of making a personality disorder diagnosis. Now, could these be added later on? I don't know. But one of those components, it didn't really mention, it alluded to socioeconomic dysfunction, but it didn't talk about what's called egodystonic and egosyntonic behaviors. Egosyntonic behaviors, beliefs, behaviors, and patterns, that's when the individual, let's say with a personality disorder, does something, maybe they hurt somebody else, or they say something that's hurtful, and they don't feel any regret. There's no dissonance associated with it. So it's egosyntonic. Now, ego dystonic, that's when you do something, you hurt someone's feelings, and you have this sense of remorse. You have this sense of dissonance and regret to where you feel bad. That's usually something that helps an individual to then change their behavior so that they don't do it again. Now, in our explanation, 
ChatGPT didn't consider that. And that's kind of a higher order factor to consider. So ChatGPT isn't there yet. Another factor that I consider is, is it pervasive? So, and I think ChatGPT did mention this, right? That we want to know if it's pervasive across context. So is that maladaptive behavior? Is it at home? Is it at work? Is it with loved ones? Is it with romantic partners, friends, whomever, family members, things like that. So is it with them? Also, do they have an external locus of control? Now, ChatGPT didn't mention that, but it's something that we see. An individual with personality disorders typically have an external locus of control. And what that means is that they believe that outcomes are based on what is external as opposed to an internal locus of control. And what that means is that what I do, how I behave, what I think, and the effort that I put in to different tasks determines the outcome. And granted that this is absolutely a dimensional construct, but it's important, I think, to realize that we have to consider that. Where is your locus of control? Is it external, which most individuals with a personality disorder have an intensive external locus of control. However, what I try to do in my treatment is that we try to make it internal, such as validation is a great example, is that that external validation, what happens is, is your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors is often driven by how other people treat you, not how you believe you should be treated or your own sense of worth. And that can become really, really problematic. So that's another area. I think that ChatGPT missed that. Now, ChatGPT did talk about this. Is it enduring or is it episodic? Because these have to be pervasive patterns, right, that we see. It can't be just one instance, right? So if you're driving to work and you just get really upset and really mad and frustrated, it's not something that happens typically for you. That would be episodic. If it's enduring, that means that you have a temper problem, right? You have a little short fuse. And you're acting up and you're getting frustrated and all that other stuff. And it's the enduring part that factors into the personality disorder. And ChatGPT did mention that. Lastly, and I don't think that ChatGPT mentioned this, but I think that it is important, that it is the inability of the individual to adjust their behavior based upon the situation that they're in. And what we see is that individuals with personality disorders, that they become fixed on a particular pattern of beliefs and behaviors and that when they're in a situation, if they fear abandonment, for example, and they're afraid their partner is going to leave. So what they do is that then they may act in a particular way or act out in desperation in order to bring that individual closer to them. So in another instance, if they think that they're going to lose their job, they may act out in another extreme manner in order to try to secure their job, this sense of desperation. So we see that they're not really able to adjust their behavior based upon the situation that they're in. And the more they're able to do that, typically the lower the severity of the personality disorder. Now, ChatGPT didn't really mention that. So there's a lot of differences. So I don't think that, nutshell it, I don't think that your next therapist is going to be AI. I think that I'm currently 52 years old. Maybe when I'm 82, 72, I don't know. Maybe they will. But where we are right now, I don't think so. But I think it's important that we continue to be aware of the fact that this could be something that could certainly help us, could also be something that hurts us as well. And I think like everything else, we have to take everything with a grain of salt and add a degree of skepticism to it and see how it applies to you. We always have to be organism that makes the decision because we will be the organism that deals with the consequence. So I hope you found this helpful. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.